We're very good at knowing what we don't know here. And then we go figure out how do we get that answer. Clarkor is a multi-billion dollar corporation that has distribution and, and materials and equipment available for what we're going to do when we build out the commercial farms. We were visited one day by uh, a couple of people in three-piece suits. NTR is a worldwide successful developer of renewable energy projects. They said they wanted to do one thing. Can, I, can we see what happens when you spin it? We want to see what happens to the algae when you get it into a container. Green Plains is the partner that, that can take the finished product and get it to the customers, whether it's feed, fuel, or food. Some weeks later they came back and they said, all right, we think you have a better system than one of the biggest algae organizations in the world right now. And I just looked at them and I just said, you, you've got to be kidding me. There's hundreds of millions of dollars that have been spent researching algae and trying to get it to some kind of commercial scale. I said to Tim, you know, I know I'm biologist, so I do know that there's value to algae for pharmaceutical and for oil and whatnot, but I can't believe there's a market for it. My role in this company is to help drive that, that innovation we develop around here and how do you bring that to commercialization. And that's how the whole thing started. We really wanted to be the farmer. We wanted to be the agricultural producer. We wanted to take our reactors and grow and harvest algae. How do you bring that to a business? Oh, we, we can do that. And all of a sudden we do it. And then how do you deliver that business to a platform? Or we can make that and all of a sudden we make it. And how do we partner? What are the right partners? It was one of those things we sat around the table and say, this just kind of keeps working. In today's world, you need to have the partnerships in place that can scale. And Bioprocess H2O, they're the inventors. They're the entrepreneurs. They're the guys that we were going to, we put our money and our commitment behind so that we can take this technology that's been used for many, many years in water filtration, grow something, and give the world food, feed, and fuel. 2008, they were just forming GPRE to 2.4 billion run rate now. And to look at that and you say, you're with the right partners. I hooked up with Tim Burns, who's the business genius, and he directed me and he said, look, you have to stop inventing things. We have to start selling some things. When we first went into it, we were viewed by some in the industry and the advanced biofuels. Why would you team up with an ethanol company? Why would you even go there? I mean, they viewed them as a competition, as the enemy. So you got these two guys that truly understand technology and business. And you've got great investors and great owners around them. GPRE completely got it. They looked at it and said, you know what? I have CO2. I understand co-products. And I have a co-product coming out of my fermentation process that I want to harness. Um, my principal role is they've kind of put me in a playpen and I get to think about new ideas. And you know you have John back there going, can I patent that? I don't want to patent that. This just keeps working. And we're just he's just watching his technology move all the way through to commercial scale, and I know we're all sitting around going, well, when isn't it going to work? We do have hiccups along the way, but there's been nothing in this project that's deterred us and said, is algae an industry in the bloom? And the answer is yes. Anybody can grow algae in a sterile laboratory, but how about in an industrial setting? If you can't do it in the field, then I think that it's a high, highly risky business. It takes a long time to develop a new energy source. And along the way, there's going to be a lot of missteps. Challenging and fun and rewarding come in all different flavors. There's a lot new that we are discovering every day, but uh, we're, we're also trying to be really cognizant all, of all the work that's come before us. We're making product. We're really doing something. To your bottle, to your small reactor, to the last phase one, and now into phase two. And that's an amazing thing. Every time you make it bigger, it keeps working. As Todd says, all these things keep lining up. Well, they line up for a reason. I mean, we've been able to, on an, I always say, an order of magnitude less in time and in financial. If we spend a million dollars, it would take any other organization, in our opinion, it would take them 10 million. We're our real world experience guys. We roll up our sleeves and get dirty. Two years later, we have commercial scale reactors sitting here in Shenandoah, Iowa. What we think is the only reactors in the world today that are taking CO2 from an industrial plant. Our company has a huge advantage, algae, has a huge advantage in that we all came from the wastewater background, and we know what we know from trying to not grow algae. They are entrepreneurs, and they are visionaries. John is a scientist, a visionary. He saw the opportunity and the possibility of this technology around that they had at Bioprocess H2O. This material, which is a 
linear composite material, which means the chemicals are all kind of linked together, made from products I really can't talk about, but um, there's a lot of research. This looks like a funny little piece of material, but it's actually a highly engineered product. And it really does truly look like just some, a bunch of sewing machines that are coming together, shaking these single strands, and those single strands is where the algae grows. Somebody said Johnny's just a wild professor type. He'll never get anywhere. It's been absolutely the opposite thing. I'll tell you, 90% of it comes from serendipity and just watching it and learning how things work. One species is completely different than another. People always tried to make John what he wasn't. And the whole thing is let John be who he is. And then we can bring in guys like Toby's of the world and we can build around that. Make sure that you know, we're really grounded in, in science and, and, and research and want to make sure that we yeah, cross all the T's and dot the I's. You can have the greatest technology in the world, but if you don't have the great people with you, it doesn't matter. We've had every politician in Rhode Island through here, and I say to every single one of them, if you guys would treat us half as good as the people in Iowa have treated us, we would have a wonderful state. I said, why don't you make us sister states? Wouldn't that be a kind of a cool idea? You know, we'll just uh, help each other out. He is a guy who's grounded in kind of, give me the problem, and I'm gonna put you on the road to the solution. Um, give us your bad ideas or your criticisms. Uh, we, we, we love the challenge. Let's, um, let's try to figure it out. We had, without a doubt, enough capital to build out this project. But when we were talking to the folks at the Iowa Power Fund, they had the vision of what, creating jobs in Iowa, building on technologies around a lot of things that are very important to the Iowa taxpayer, which is agriculture. A lot of what I call the shakeout started to happen. The early promoters kind of left the industry because they were more promotional. And now it's getting grounded into companies who are doers and make things. So you're in a stage of let's do, and you gotta produce. And once you produce, there's nothing better than empirical data and there's nothing better than a profitable farm. And once the profitable farm's on, as we say around here, you've just changed things. We think what we've accomplished and the yields that we've been able to, to get out of these reactors and the abilities for these reactors to grow 365 days a year, literally harvesting out of these reactors almost on a daily basis, we think that we're actually going to be part of the standard of growing and harvesting algae. We have the leadership role. It's our responsibility to see it through. You know, and that's our opportunity, too. We've had people from EPA. We've had people from USDA. We've had people from the Department of Energy. We even had the White House. They all know about this project. And they all know something's going on in Shenandoah, Iowa, and they want to know what it is. Greg Connell, I have to say, has been the spearhead on the whole thing. They should absolutely put a statue of this guy up because he is so ahead of his time. 10, 15 years from now, you're going to see corn and soy, but you'll see concentric circles around these CO2 emitters of algae farms. This is going to be a crop, and crops need farmers. So it's going to, they're going to be modern farmers. You bring people in, you don't have to say, close your eyes and imagine. You can say, look and see, and now look and replicate. Because we don't think that there's anything else like this in the world today.